All right, this is a Schneider Cruise Net Retina Xenon 50mm f1.9 lens, which came to me on a Retina Reflex 4 camera. And it needs to be stripped and serviced. Its uh, most notable features is that the aperture is slightly sticky. But the point, the other lever, which shifts the depth of field pointers and also sets the aperture uh, to, its, to its maximum setting, is gummy. And the lens has quite a noticeable rattle to it, which tells me that things are not as they should be. So it needs to be stripped, cleaned, reassembled, and then I can see what's going on inside it. So I start from the front. Alright, start by unscrewing the retainer here, that conical section, using a friction tool. Alright, so that conical section is threaded into the center of the front lens element. The hood or filter mount comes off and there we see three screws. Those three screws hold the lens capsule into the body of the lens and that's also where you make your adjustment for focus to get correct focus at infinity. So I can remove those three screws with their washers. Tip those screws out. And the lens capsule. The lens capsule fell out. You can see here, this is the where the lens actually focuses. That's the helical, the lens moves in and out of the body of the lens at that point. That's not too stiff. I'll clean that grease and get rid of it. I'm checking the diaphragm action here. Now that's actually quite snappy. I'm looking at the blades and they show no oil contamination. Um, our problems with this particular lens lay elsewhere obviously. So starting here, let's move back into camera. You can see two brass brackets here held by a total of four screws. They control how much, how they, they hold this focus ring to the body. And they're not correctly adjusted, and you can see that because there's a lot of slop there, and that's where that rattle's coming from. Because the lens capsule's mount mat is mounted on this component, it means that the lens capsule was actually moving slightly too, and so you could end up with focus problems. I think it would need to be more severe than that to get anything noticeable. From the rear of the lens, because this is where we start. We have four screws, one of them is locked in place with lacquer. Just a red dot, and it's just to help you line up the lens when you're refitting it to the camera. So I'll just put a, a dot of acetone on there to soften that, what looks like red paint to me, and remove those four screws. The lens is 
mount is complicated by the fact that it has moving depth of field pointers which open and close to expose a greater length of your focus scale or lesser depending on the chosen aperture and focus distance. Right, I'm just looking at that. This is a later lens. Uh, it doesn't have the cam to suit the Retina 3S which means it's simple, it's simpler to deal with. And we can lift off the components in order. I usually lift them off in order and then clean them and put them back in the same order. So I'm checking that. That was held. Its return spring was the thin spring here. Then we have that separator, our second pointer, and the follower that follows that piece there is works on that cam which makes adjustments to the position of that and then hence the pointers. Right, so you've got to be very careful with these two springs. Sometimes you can lift them off, other times they're reluctant to come off. Don't get them trapped over the centre like that and then plonk them down on the bench because you'll mess the spring up. They're all right sticking out to the side. We have those four screws into those brass brackets. They can come out. This is by no means the stickiest lens I've seen in some time. The grease is quite gooey but uh, often it's much worse than that. All that old grease has to be cleaned off and appropriate lubricant put in its place in appropriate amounts. Alright, if we take those off we can separate the two components. Now that was just stuck to it, it was gummy, it was stuck in there like it was glue. One of those springs has fallen off for me, that's useful. Here we have some plastic. Now I think that's probably Teflon or something very similar to Teflon. It's a very low friction material. It needs to be cleaned, it shouldn't have all that muck on it. It's held in place with this bracket here. It has two screws holding it down. We need to lift that off. That piece of plastic, it's fairly important that you don't stretch it. Like a lot of soft things, it's easily stretched and it won't go back where it came from. So be careful about getting it off and be careful about cleaning it. This is just a very dirty, oily mess under here. None of that should be there. We can take that off. That is our lens mount disassembled. All these components need to be cleaned now. I'm going to use cigarette lighter fluid, Ronsonol or Venti or whatever you get your hands on really. It's just naphtha. Um, it's very convenient in a container that size. And unless you're doing vast numbers of camera repairs, it's not an uneconomic way to buy it. If you start using bucket loads of the stuff, there are cheaper ways to buy naphtha. So what I'm doing here is I'm cleaning all these surfaces and they are very, very greasy and gooey.
I want this all nice, clean, shiny, anodized aluminium. And then I'll stick what lubricants I like in the appropriate places after that. But first I need to get rid of all this mess. Components like this, you can't just fling them into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner because it would remove paint from things like that little arrowhead dot and then you'd have all the tedium of putting that back. Right, that seems pretty good. And the cotton buds are coming off relatively cleanly. So that means that I've been fairly successful in getting the filth off. Let's have a go at this piece of plastic. So I'll wipe the top surface. This is very sticky. I'll wipe the bottom surface. Flip it over. Wipe the top surface again. Until it should be almost an invisible to you because it's just white plastic and there's virtually nothing to it. This piece. Might as well start with a partly used cotton bud, get rid of the vast bulk of that scunge. Hook. Given the amount of grease in this, I suspect that somebody has made it their business to lubricate it at some stage in the past. There seems to be two colours of grease in here. Um, a charcoal grey, probably graphite based grease and something much lighter, a yellowish grease. So I dare say it means that someone has had a go at lubricating this probably because they felt it was stiffer than it should be and they didn't bother removing whatever lubricant was there first they just added to it however I could be wrong it's been known to happen okay. let's see what we can do with these A lot of the marks will not come off that brass, that's oxidation I suppose. It doesn't need to come off. We're just interested in removing any grease and filth. Now these pieces of brass, where they clamp down on the lens, there's a coating on them. Now it's some sort of very low friction coating, I've got no idea what it is. It doesn't wipe off, nor should you attempt to wipe it off. It uh, doesn't look like Teflon, but it's something that does a similar job. So I'm getting rid of all the old grease and the dirt and the dust that it's managed to trap over time. And once they're clean they shouldn't be sticky. This little bracket that guides the lens, that stops the lens capsule from rotating at all on the body as you turn the focus and this means that the helical pushes the lens forward and backwards in the mount, not just turning on the spot. Alright, 
that's our components of the mount and let's put that on a clean piece of paper and see about reassembling this once we have the mount basically reassembled here then we can put the other stuff in all right so this is the face we're interested in here's our piece of plastic and it goes on only one way it goes right there We have our bracket. Now I'm just checking and making sure I put this in the right spot. It goes there. Taking those screws slightly, I'm just going to rotate that piece of plastic a little bit so I can see all my screw holes easily. That sounds fine. These screws are slightly countersunk, which basically means they'll find their way home and pull that bracket into correct alignment. I'll just check that that's where I wanted it to be. That things are centered and that I put the bracket in the right way around and I did that's good this piece this can go back I check that the arrow pointer here falls somewhere on the focus scale Check that that rotates smoothly. Make sure I'm not trapping that spring under anything. Pop the brass brackets back in place. With these screws. Do them up very lightly. Put the other one in. trace of lacquer about the heads of those screws which will be from when it was first assembled there would have been a trace of lacquer put on them to stop them coming loose so I'm just checking the motion of these parts make sure that's smooth and it certainly is but there's a bit of rattle so what I've got to do is effectively push these brass pieces out so that they bind the two components together more firmly and 
I'll start by just making sure one of the brackets is screwed down tight and I want to check which axis the rattle is in. So I've got my screws are across my finger and thumb. I'm just checking if there's a lot of mo movement in that axis and there certainly is. So I'll move that brass bracket slightly to the outside. Tighten it down. Check again. Still a lot of play. Move that a bit further. No, there's no play there. Move it around 90 degrees and try the other position. Very slight play there. I'm looking at my brackets, see if they're evenly positioned. They weren't really. Make sure they're tightened down. Very slightest amount of movement there. Move that out a bit further. That's good. Go back to the first ones I did. That's good. So I've taken the play out of that, but that action is smooth. That's good. So that part of the mount is all good. <coughs> and turn my attention to cleaning the various rings and popping them back into position. Here's our first component. And I'm making sure I get rid of all the oil and grease that's on this component. It should be effectively dry. When you've got broad flat surfaces, any oil tends to stick things together like glue create a large amount of drag, suction, and uh, we want all that off. So that's good. I'll get a tiny amount of molybdenum, run it in that track. That's where that little cam follower sits that drops down into place that's nice and smooth the first of the depth of field pointers sits over that ring and is coupled to it. Again I'm removing all traces of grease and muck. That drops into position. And that slot falls over that pin on that bracket right there. Then we have this spacer. Its separator keeps the two pointers apart from each other. It has a groove around the outside circumference in which those springs run. It's symmetrical and it drops into that groove there in the housing. So which spring have I got here? The small one. So the large spring I think I want on here. That should couple right there. 
The next piece is our other pointer and it's much the same deal. Remove anything that looks like grease or oil or contamination. It's not required. This pops down into position. Now, the two pointers are linked by the gears here so that they counter rotate. When one rotates towards the centre, the other one swings back towards the centre too. Now I've got to get this spring into position and I've got some gunk on my tweezers. I need to get rid of that. Let's see if I can get this spring hooked up correctly. It um, went surprisingly easily. That's suspect. Alright, those components are in. I need to do this component next. Oh, it's time to change a battery. Back in a minute. All right, back with a fresh battery. Pick up where we left off. This component that couples to the camera, couples to the setting rings on the front of the camera. Sometimes these tabs can be bent and that's because the lens has been ill-treated um, in which case things don't run as smoothly as they might. This sits opposite the other tab so it sits about there. That's it. We have the rear, well, this is the lens mount actually, this is what goes on next. I'm just giving that a clean too. On a lot of lenses, this will also contain the cam for coupling to the rangefinder on a Retina 3S camera. But in our case, this is a later lens. And it doesn't. Looking at the serial number, 9238628. I'm told anything after 8 million lacked that can. I'll show you what the can looked like on the back of this lens. This is an earlier lens. And with these mounts, it rotated into the same orientation. You can see. This one has the coupling cam to suit the Retina 3S. This one does not. Back to where we were. Alright, everything's good. Everything's in place. The pointers look like they're in place. A little fleck of something there. What's that? Don't want that. Alright. There's a little hole here. That fits over a locating pin over here. I'm just about to put this in position. Drop it over that locating pin and check that the levers swing smoothly. They do. I'm looking at my depth of field pointers. Where are we? Over here making sure that they are centered and that they move together making sure they're not one tooth out no nope, that's good so there are four screws we know that one of them was red there should be traces of red on the mount to tell us where that went
the other three were not. There's a trace of red there, so that's where the red one went. We'll put him back. That's good. Just checking the feel of that lens. It feels looser now than it did previously. I'm just going to adjust the position of those pieces, of those brass brackets. Most definitely something's moved. That piece there, I don't I think that's not over as far as it once was. That's much snug. I think that's too far, too much. Let's just take that back a bit. It's okay. What's it like in the other plane? It's pretty good. Yeah, it won. That feels good. Now I'm just going to apply a little bit of molybdenum to the aluminium edge where those pieces will run just to make sure that there's no galling. Because if you get Galling. Galling's where two metals rub up against each other and they effectively push a piece of metal up. They call, cause the metal to ball up so that uh, you end up with a high spot which rubs even further and causes more problems. Some metals are particularly prone to galling. Stainless steels, aluminiums. No, quite happy with the feel of that. I'm just checking that these levers are smooth. And this lever in particular was sticky when we started. That's good now. Turn my attention to the lens capsule. Let's have a look at this. I've already decided that the diaphragm was in good order and probably requires no attention. But the focus helical is a bit gummy. That grease has just got a bit sticky. Now it's, I'm working in the sun here. This is hot. This lens component is probably 40 degrees or so. So it's been sitting in the sun. So all of that grease will be as runny as it's ever going to be. So it might not seem to be a problem at the moment, but rest assured that first day out in the cold weather, that's likely to be very sticky again. So we need to remove that old grease and replace it with some fresh modern lubricant. One that doesn't change its viscosity at the drop of a hat. It feels a bit better. I'll just check those threads. I'll put a drop of solvent on there and I'll work them. That'll rub loose any grease that was down in the grooves and didn't lift off easily with the cotton bud. Mm -hmm. 
notice that I didn't take a great deal of notice of the start position of those multi-start threads and that's because we'll be adjusting the focus ourselves so I don't have to take note of exactly where things were relative to each other though if I'd marked it carefully I could have just reassembled it into exactly the same thread position and reasonably expect the focus to be exactly identical to, as it is to what it was before that's a bit better still not quite as clean as I would like you can tell when the threads are really clean because they feel dry and uh, dare I say it gritty with no lubricant on them and if you haven't got them that clean it means you still have some lubricant on there That's better. Yeah, that hip diaphragm is very snappy. Lubricant, lubricant. What have I got? Helimax. That's it. Helimax XP made for helical threads. This will work nicely. You don't need buckets of it. I usually put it on at a few spots around the lens, around the thread. run the ring on and work it backwards and forwards a few times that'll spread that lubricant out oh, it ran right off the back there that's smooth that's good let's pop that away if you put too much grease in there, it'll be too stiff. Um, it's never a disaster. You can simply clean it off with solvent and have another go. Right. Now, getting this back into its mount is always a bit of a challenge. However, as with most things in life, there are tricks. So, first I want to remove that rear group. I'll find the right tool. Let's just swing this around out of the sun. That's better. I'll shift my position accordingly. Okay. So what have we got to achieve? There's a fork here that works that aperture, the diaphragm. That has to line up with this piece here, which is coupled to this ring here on the outside. Now, it's always a bit of an act getting this all done together, mostly because the lens, the diaphragm, wants to close down further than you would otherwise want it to. So what I do is this. Take a cotton bud, open the diaphragm up manually, drop the tip of the cotton bud in there, like that. So it's physically holding that open. Then it's a fairly simple matter to line up that component, that bracket. So we're trying to line up two things. We're trying to line up the piece that works in this fork and here where the guide post goes that stops the lens rotating 
So it is quite possible, and I'm just checking to see what the relative position of these two components are. It's something like that. That's it. That's it. So that's all back in position. Now we can pop our three screws and their washers back in the front. That'll stop the lens falling apart. And then after that, we can set the focus once I've put the rear group back in, of course. That's most important. What's the time? Oh, I've got plenty of time. Got to keep an eye on the time. Can't afford to be working overtime. The washers almost fit down in a groove in the outside diameter of this mount. Sometimes it's hard to get them seated. Let's see if I can separate the two. That's better. Get my washer down in position first. Then pop the screw in. That's it, now it can't fall apart. Good, I'll do the others. Get the washer in place. Get the screw in place. I don't even need to nip those screws up at this stage, I need them loose so that I can adjust things. Had the diaphragm shown any signs of oil contamination, I would have removed the front group as well. And with the front group removed, I would have cleaned. As I was saying before I ran out of camera space or card space, if the diaphragm had been oily, I would have removed the front and rear elements of the lens and swabbed the blades clean. I rarely dismantle the diaphragms in these particular lenses because it's, they are double blades each blade is two pieces and they are very very awkward to get back together and comparatively delicate too they can be easily damaged so I generally do not I'll look at this rear lens group Make sure the inner surface is clean, or as clean as I thought it was, it is, and that can be screwed back in. Now I can tell that that focus is not turning all the way around to the infinity position, but the lens is all the way back there and more. So I'll just rotate that right around to there. And we'll back it out a bit. And then I'm going to set that up on a camera. 
and check my focus. The camera in question, I have already made sure that everything, the focus screen and everything is correct. So I can just use the viewfinder screen to tell when the lens is correctly focused. And that's what I'll do. So I'm checking it against an infinity target. And whether by luck or design, that's absolutely spot on. So I can lift those three screws up. I'll check that the diaphragm is snappy. Let's turn it down to F22. That looks correct. Let me check that. Yes, that's good. That snaps down correctly. Well, we're just about done. The filter mount section, I'll just run around that with a cotton bud, lift off any dirt. That's good. Often these are bashed in. This one's in great, great condition. It's got a little tab on it which locks it in position. It can only go in one place. And the conical section in the centre screws in place and locks this all together. Just going to get that thread started. And I can use a toothpick in that. This doesn't want to start, I'm not sure why. Not going on squarely. Once we pick up the start of the food, it'll be okay. Let's see what's happening. Will that thread in smoothly? Yes, it does. Let's rack that right to a close focus position to bring that lens well clear of the body. And have another go. That's it. Just got to hold your mouth right. All right, a friction tool. A kingdom for a friction tool. Here we go. That's it. That's done. That's happy. And that is how you take a lens like that apart. The focus is nice and smooth now. The aperture pointers are very, very smooth. That's great. Thanks for watching.